I got to talk to this man before the end of the week. I have to do it. I think this is a great story. Four armed men wearing masked masks entered a Missouri church earlier this month with alleged intent to rob it or worse. <laughs> alleged? <laughs> well, <laughs> really well, necessary. Just, okay. Well, just listen. Listen mm-hmm. to the story. So, uh, Marquello, I guess, Frutrell, he is the pastor at All Creation Northview Holiness Family Church. Too many words in that. Just cut <laughs> it down, Pastor. Cut it down. <laughs> Economy of words. Okay. It's in Ferguson. He said he watched these four guys wearing masks with guns on their waists and empty bags in their hands walking in. Now, he's a former police officer and now a pastor. He said, the hairs on my uh, back of my neck just stood up. And I'm like, okay, something's about to happen. It's not going to be good. He said, me being a former police officer, I noticed the waistbands. And I'm like, okay, something in their waistbands as well. So he's up there and he's preaching and he's seeing this. Nobody else has seen it yet. And he's like, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? So he does what I don't think anybody else would do. He's like, hey, you. Yeah, you. You in the purple jacket. What is your name? And he starts walking down the aisle towards them. And he engages them directly. What is your name? I can't hear you. Say your name out loud. And then he said, you four gentlemen, can you account for yourself? Who sent you here? You just decided you saw this church and you just decided, ah, oh, come in. I'm just going to come on in. Talk to me. Why are you here? Who sent you here? He said they found out uh, that they were later, they were connected to uh, two robberies from convenience stores. Um, and the preacher just engaged them and said, Turning to the congregation, you know what? Let's praise God for them coming in today. Let's just praise God. I praise God that God sent them in here because I think the devil meant this for evil. (laughs) Then he said, but you are messing with the wrong guy. Don't play with me. I still got a cop anointing. And I still know what's going on, and I know what's about to happen. God's about to change the plan of the enemy. So let's pray on these four. And he turns to the young men, and he looks at him and says, lift your voice up to God. Pray with us, will you? And the young men are like, uh, uh, uh. And then the entire congregation surrounds these would-be robbers, and uh, he's like, "Bow your heads, bow your heads. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna pray on you." And so the whole congregation comes around, and they put their hands. Nobody's reaching for the gun. They put their hands on the back of these guys, and they are praying that the Holy Ghost will come and just change these men. They pray for a while. And then the congregation sits back down. He's like, see, brothers, that wasn't so bad. Thank you for letting us pray for you. We're thankful that for whatever reason, the Lord let you come on in here. And when you walked on this ground, you walked on the ground of the the Holy Ghost. You stepped foot on the all creation parking lot and you encountered the move of the Holy Ghost. And I don't think any of you are going to be the same. And they all just kind of looked at him, looked at the congregation, wearing the masks, <laughs> looked at each other, and went, yes, sir, and turned around and walked out. Police wow. are still looking for them. The pastor said, oh, we've got to find this, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard, and the flood will never be greater than the standard. I mean, you want to talk about faith in God? That pastor coming out from behind that podium and seeing him and knowing, oh boy, there's trouble. 
Mm. I think that's a great story. What kind of masks were that? Do we know? Were they, did they at least protect the congregation from COVID-19? On the evening of February 21st, the number 12 ranked Mid-Vermont Christian School Eagles of White River Junction. <laughs> Again, too many names. Mm. Too many names. They were scheduled to take on the number five Long Trail Mountain Lions of Dorset. First round of the Vermont Division Four Girls Varsity Tournament. The Eagles dropped out. They forfeited the game. Because when they got there, they realized that a, one member of the Mountain Lions was actually a male. <laughs> And so they withdrew from the tournament because they said, we believe playing against an opponent with a biological male jeopardizes the fairness of the game, the safety of our players, and allowing biological males to participate in women's sports sets a bad precedent for the future of women's sports in general. Good for them. I mean, some school eventually is going to be smart enough to just go out there and just recruit a whole team of dudes. And just go out there and just kick everybody's butt. And half the teams will just probably forfeit. I mean, this is a very ultra competitive world I'd out like, there. I'd like to. I'd <laughs> I like want to start this school. I know. I'd like to do that. You know, if there was like a, I don't know, a, a podcasting, you know, kind mm-hmm. of division. Mm-hmm. We get all the guys here, just put them in skirts. I, and just. I don't mm-hmm. know how that would. I mean, that might be something you like, but it's not something that I think would affect the quality of the podcasts. No, the pot. No, no, no. The podcast division. If there was a sports division with the podcasts, and then there was male, female, we just because I don't think our team would be mm. necessarily that good <laughs> playing against men. But even I could, you know. Come on, seriously, women, right? That's not mm. too sexist, is it? <laughs> right? No, women, definitely not. I mean, who can't Certainly beat not a what woman, you're going for. Right. Right. <laughs> Specifically. <laughs> I will say, though, in sports, you know, you have a little bit of real world evidence that boys are able to compete in most sports at a higher level well, than girls. Yes, I know. I mean, you can look at things like track and field where you're just literally measuring and you find a lot of these results play out that way. Hmm. So, so wait a minute, you're saying that only a Russian, probably hermaphrodite from the Soviet Union days, Mm -hmm. that is doing shot put, is not as good as a male doing that. (laughs) I don't know. That's a good point. But usually that's the way it plays out. Right, right. And my understanding is hermaphrodite no longer the accepted term. And I learned this uh, directly from Weird Al Yankovic. (laughs) So I know it's true. Okay. Because uh, he... Why were... <laughs> what? <laughs> Why were... How did that happen? Do you happen? have a lot of questions? Yeah, that? I okay. do. Uh, I just... Uh, okay, that's that's fair. No, Weird Al uh, has been doing a, a concert uh, tour over the past few years, uh-huh. which I happen to see. And he has a song from many years ago. You went alone, didn't you? Of course I did. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to go with me to that. <laughs> so... <laughs> this is sad. So, this is sad. A man in oh, his forties. That was the best night of my life. It was fantastic. By himself. I do it again. I do it Play again. the accordion, <laughs> Al. Play the accordion. Bring it home. It was fantastic. <laughs> I bet it was. But uh, so he had a song. I can't remember which one it was. But he uses the word hermaphrodite in it, and he going. He's going through the whole thing, and he actually stops the song in the middle of it, and says, "In totally a like a, I you know." Weird Al, I don't know what his politics are. He's never been a political guy. He, yeah. I, I don't. That's he's he does. Weird Al right. Yankovic. I know, but right. he's a legend. Okay, mm-hmm. Weird Al's a legend, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so he kind of stops it and says, "By the way, this is not the term we're supposed to use anymore." And he goes to this whole thing about how you know things change over time and like trying to like not be canceled, but also right. acknowledging it. And right. it was in a very very funny way. But I honestly, there's so many terms that have been canceled. I didn't even realize. That hermaphrodite, apparently, not a term you're supposed to use anymore. Huh. Now, I don't care about that at all. Yeah, I don't but, either. But I do think it is interesting that that was like one of the things that they would use as the defense back in the day. Yeah. Remember, when they were talking about transgender people, they would say, well, what about hermaphrodites? These are people that are bo- Like, you keep saying there's only two genders. What about hermaphrodites? That's what they always <laughs> used to say. Always that was their argument. Yep. Now they can't even make the argument because they won't let themselves use the word. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> we are screwed up. Let me ask you something, because mm-hmm. you've, you've loved Weird Al for 
very long time. Yes. Ever since I've known you. I right. love Weird Al. I loved him back in the day. I believe he's been on the show. You know, we met him. Um, we met him once when we were in New York, and he was in the studios for something okay, else. I don't yeah. remember if we brought him on the air or not. Okay. Um, All right. I can't remember. Yeah, I can't remember if we brought him on the air. I also can't remember really meeting him, but he is. A, You've had him on the air, though. Yeah, I've had him on the air several times. Yes. But you, mm -hmm. you, that's, that's a big deal, Weird Al. Yeah, for sure. I love Weird Al. Did you go backstage to meet him? No, I did not. I just uh, just sat in the audience and, and and enjoyed the show. You 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 can't. You have such little juice. You can't <laughs> even get a backstage pass to to see. Those are uh, your, highly uh, oh, highly prized items. That they now don't they just did, come on the internet. Now look, it, was there a meet and greet level here? Uh, and did I look into it? Sure. I mean, did I did I see if there was any available? The answer to that was no. There were none available at the time when I looked. <laughs> but I would have proudly gone to meet and greet Weird Al and told you all about it. I, right. I love the guy. No, I know. I know you do. I love the guy. I know. And How much would you have paid to shake his hand and get your photo no, with Weird Al? As I just mentioned, I've met him before. I know, but to get your message, you know, to, I mean, you would have paid for a meet and greet. How much is that worth to you? A private meeting with Weird Al. I'm just asking, how much would that be worth? I, I would have paid the ticket premium to Which get Which would have been what? I don't know. Probably, I bet it would have been an extra Five, hundred bucks, couple extra, hundred bucks. Huh? I couple mean, hundred you know, bucks. Couple meet and greets. You know, you, you're familiar with this process. You usually well, Is it worth, mm -hmm. let's say, $500? I mean, you're not going with a crowd. It'd be one-on-one. <laughs> -on -one. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I am, I'm conflicted by this. I think you're leading to something to make fun of me, but like, <laughs> no, I, I'm very conflicted. I'm just I trying actually, to go for your wallet. Oh, okay. I just I don't actually want to meet the people that you like that I like. I I feel I find it too. I mean, I've met you. I, I liked you when I was on the air when I was a kid. You were the local host, and I was like, this guy when sounds I, funny. And now I've met I him, and it ruined the whole kid. thing. <laughs> right, right, right. You've destroyed my vision of you. It's like regular people for me. I met you. Right, you were a regular a regular person, person when and we now met. much worse than that. You're still a regular person, <laughs> and I don't like you. Right. I like you, so. but I, I don't, you're not like that. I mean, I know you've had uh, instances where you've like you've had uh, yeah, BB King, BB King, yeah, right? BB King, Elton John, both of them. Uh, you loved them, love them, Elton John. I can't use that word on the air. Not a nice man. Uh, mm. And uh, and BB King um, hit on my wife, right? Okay. Right, funny. I was the fan. <laughs> now you don't have even okay. the juice to stop an artist from no. hitting on your wife. No, well, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, man can only do so much. Mm -hmm. uh, but I walk in with, I, I walk in, and and she slept during the conf uh, concert. She hates BB King. <laughs> I love BB <laughs> King, and you know, I walk in, mm -hmm. and he doesn't even look up for me. I'm like, Mr. King. He's like, ah. Uh -huh. <laughs> And uh, I walk closer. I just wanted to shake your hand. Blah, blah. And he looks up and he does. He looks at me for like half a second. And then he goes right to Tanya and he's like, come on over here and sit on BB's lap. <laughs> That's I'm, an opening line right and there. And I shoved her out of the way <laughs> and I sat on his lap and it was very nice. <laughs>